little story, my oldest daughter, who is 18, she, she just graduated from high school, and then our little one is eight. <clears throat> Excuse me, and Carly, the oldest, um, she called me the day before yesterday, and she said, Mom, I know this is kind of frivolous, but I need you to pray. She said, I spent the night with some friends, and she said, my, um, can't find my cell phone. And she said, will you pray I can find it? And I thought, well, God cares about everything, so okay. Yeah, so I prayed, and a little while she called me back, and she was crying. She said, Mom, I still can't find my phone. And I said, well, honey, it's just a cell phone. You know, we'll, we'll get another one. And she said, but, Mom, that's not it. She said, it's got all my pictures, and it's got my text messages from Kenny. And I got it. <laughs> Kenny was a, a sweet boy. He was not her boyfriend, just a good friend. And um, a couple months ago, she got a text message from him late one night. She knew that he had always been kind of troubled and battled depression. And he was 17, and he called her or texted her, and he said, uh, Do you think anybody would care if I lived or died? She said, Well, Kenny, absolutely. She said, We. We all love you, all your friends. We think you're pretty special. And she just chatted back and forth with him for quite a while and tried to encourage him. And she thought, you know, he'd gone to sleep. She didn't hear anything else from him. And the next morning we were getting on the bus and she walked into my room and she's five foot nine, beautiful girl. And she got down in my lap. I was making up the bunks and I was on the floor there. And she got down in my lap and fell into me, and she said, Mommy, Kenny killed himself last night after we talked. And she was devastated, and she said, Mom, did I do something wrong? Was it my fault? And I said, Oh, baby, this is way too much for you to carry. Um, I don't know how you believe, but um, I don't think you can hurt yourself physically unless there's something in your mind that breaks and I said honey with a broken mind nobody could have changed his mind and it's not your fault but you know what honey you're 18 you're too young to bear a burden like that I said won't you give it to me I'm a little older and a little bit wiser I said I'm a little stronger and I think I could carry it for you won't you let me take it and you don't worry about it today I'll worry for you. And I watched her kind of calm in my arms. And, uh, next day, she'd pick it back up. And I'd say, let me take it. And I thought about how our father must feel. He sees his children that he loves so much carry such a heavy load. And he says, I'm quite a bit older and stronger than you. <laughs> I went to Calvary and died for you. I think I can carry your burden. Won't you give it to me and rest a little while? And like I said, I don't know how you feel, but I think when sweet Kenny made that crossing, I think there was a loving Savior that says, Son, you've carried this burden a long time. Somebody didn't tell you how special you were. So won't you come on and let me carry you for a while? I read where it said there were 90 and 9, and there was one sheep that was lost. It says the shepherd went out and he found that sheep. It doesn't say anything in that scripture about him chastising him or fussing at him, scolding him. It says he leaned down, picked him up, placed him on his shoulders.
Oh